From video games that have steered bright young talent up the ladder of sports car racing to the current crop of racers in the top single-seater categories, the motorsport industry relies heavily on simulator testing, and one British company spearheading the field is Ansible Motion. We have current customers in Formula One, uh, NASCAR, um, IndyCar, GT and LMP. So we really cover pretty much the whole of high-end motorsport where OEMs are constructing their own vehicles and that's the key thing. They haven't fundamentally changed the nature of racing but they're another weapon in the arms race that allows you to make use of the knowledge that you've got to a higher degree. It's a necessary tool now in high-end motorsport at every level in every category. Moving away from the hexapod design, Kamertz and his team took a new approach using a 13 plus motion axis, ensuring the driver is fully immersed with motion, graphics and audio cues. What you're primarily interested in when you're developing a vehicle is understeer oversteer gradients. And that's what the human control task for a vehicle is. Our system really came about from looking at what motion space you would need to provide a, a full featured, fully experiential automotive driving simulator. So we came across this Stratiform concept. We integrate a host of layers of real-time systems in audio and vision and computer system. And how we bring all of that together with motion uh, to create a, an immersive and realistic experience, but one that can be used by vehicle engineers in all sorts of categories to engineer the car before you actually have the physical product. With increasing costs and restrictions in on-track testing, simulators provide teams and drivers the necessary seat time in the off-season. One driver using his time wisely in the simulator is 2010 F2 champion and current Andretti Autosport Indy Lights driver Dean Stoneman. The thing with a simulator is you haven't got the fear factor, um, so you can keep driving around, you can learn where the bumps are, the apexes are. Well, you can do a lot more on a simulator because you haven't got degradation of tyres, costs of tyres. When you go to the actual track, you're limited. Say you use a Pirelli tyre, GP3, you get one, two laps maximum to develop the car. But with a simulator, you can set the sim, the grip level, and you can do lap after lap, try and make yourself better at qualifying sessions. We aim for it to be as accurate uh, as possible a representation of the real world. Everything that they, they touch, they see, and also they hear the audio system replicating those engine sounds and gear shifts. That all helps create this uh, immersive environment. The facility here is absolutely fantastic. It's me driving the sim first thing this morning, the feedback it was giving me, the, the visions as well is nearly the real thing. The technology crossover from motorsport to the consumer market is growing year on year and virtual reality simulation is pushing the boundaries in the design and technology of the cars of the future. Simulators are certainly here to stay. The gold standard is vehicles conceived, developed, improved and benchmarked wholly before the first production vehicle is made. So the end goal is entirely virtual development of vehicles whether for motorsport or for road car, and that's the point at which we can stop when we've reached that. 